Hello and welcome to our quarterly In Ocean Alliance webinar. My name is Graham Martin, Chairman and CEO of the In Ocean Alliance. And our special guest today and keynote speaker is Giovanni from Molex. Big welcome to Giovanni and thank you. Thank you all for attending today. We will be recording this and sharing this with everybody who wishes. And if you have any questions, please feel free to enter them um, during the webinar and either at the end if we have time or afterwards we will answer them. So I wanted to show just a, um, a little bit about the current opportunities we have in the Ocean Alliance and then pass over to Giovanni who has a very, very interesting case study, um, a plus energy building using an ocean technology. So the opportunity for us, um, most of you who know the In Ocean Alliance know we're all about sensors and switches for collecting data and um, helping to control and monitor buildings. And the number of sensors is going to increase exponentially. Um, there'll be 100 billion connected sensors installed over the next 10 years. And a lot of them, we believe, will need energy harvesting. We don't have the possibility to pull cables to them all, and we don't have the possibility to continually change batteries in them. And In Ocean Alliance is the clear leader here. There are others now following us, and this is good. This is giving us tailwind. So a huge opportunity for all of us. And of course, every major company in the world and every major government in the world is committed to reducing energy usage and CO2 reduction. And to do this in buildings, you need sensors uh, to, to provide you with the data. And buildings use about 40% of our energy and are responsible for about 36% of our CO2 output. So if we are going to go CO2 neutral, we need to do something with our buildings, including the existing building stock. There are also a lot of uh, focus now on health and wellness, good air quality, ESG is very popular. And of course, since COVID, we're also seeing more sharing desk, sharing society and on demand. All opportunities for our technology. There's a lot of legislation coming out, which is forcing people uh, to adopt the technology or motivating them is maybe the better word. Um, this is an example from Europe. So the Europe, we have the EPBD or Energy Performance of Buildings. Uh, there's a version 2018 and there's a new version from September 2030. And this basically says all new buildings will have to be zero emission from a certain date. And all new commercial buildings will have to have building automation and all commercial buildings will have to be retrofitted um, to make them energy efficient with building automation and using open standards. Now, all 27 European countries are committed to putting this into law. Germany has put it into the law from the 1st of January next year. This is in the law and all commercial buildings will have to use building automation existing or new. Also in North America, this one came out just recently, um, the ASHRAE standards, which is basically the Bible in many North American and other installations, they have brought out a new specification and directive about acceptable indoor air quality. This means we will have to put air quality sensors everywhere, especially CO2, that's the key one. Again, a huge opportunity for us. And another one, this was in the last webinar, but I want to remind everybody, the NEC, um, which is basically the uh, installer's Bible in the United States and other places, have effectively banned battery operated light switches. So this is a huge opportunity for us with the energy harvesting light switches. And another big opportunity is smart spaces where we're collecting data out of the building. So you can go into an existing building and just put 
in ocean sensors wherever you want. You can connect them to the existing Wi-Fi um, routers and access points in the building, and all of a sudden you're collecting the valuable data, desk occupancy, chair occupancy, temperature, air quality, energy usage, etc., and you can optimize your building. This is making it very, very easy, especially in existing buildings. And we're also looking at various vertical markets, and um, one where the ocean technology is becoming more and more popular is in ambient assisted living. Now, the population is getting older. In Japan, virtually 30% of the population are over 65, and they just don't have enough people to look after them. And in other areas, we're moving in this direction. And you see the predictions for 2050, over a third of the population will be over 65, and we will need technology to support us looking after them. In USA, it's not as critical, but we're going from 40 million people in 2012 to double that in 2014, 2050, and about 22% of the population. Again, we will need technology uh, to look after that. So we have huge opportunities um, today and moving forward, and the Ocean technology is made for providing data to control and monitor your building, no wires, no batteries. Uh, we have studies that show you're saving up to 15% uh, in new builds on your electronic installation, up to 80% in retrofits. You have 15% employee motivation and production increase if you have a healthy building. And if you optimize your building, you have Today, if it's an office, for example, 25 to 40 percent less space and running costs, and that is significant. And of course, using the technology, we can help to save 30 percent energy savings in a typical commercial environment. And being wireless and batteryless, it's maintenance-free for decades. So that was my short pitch. And um, but now we come to the interesting part today. I'd like to. Um, introduce um, our keynote speaker, um, who is one of our member companies from the Notion Alliance. We have 400 member companies um, supporting the standard, installing the technology worldwide. Um, so I'd like to hand over to Giovanni Fresa from Molex, um, who is going to show us a very interesting case study from the powerhouse in Trondheim, Norway. Over to you. Giovanni. Thank you, Ram. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to present this interesting uh, case study that I just I like to talk it about it, like a journey. Uh, before we start, I give you uh, my presentation. I'm uh, Giovanni Frezza. I'm the director of um, Mimolex for coursing uh, smart and digital building technology and also responsible for the global business development uh, for the solution in Molex. I'm based in Lyle, uh, US. It's just outside of Chicago, where Molex has the uh, US headquarters. Before, before jumping into the case study that, that uh, I would like to um, make available visible for 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 the audience uh i would like to ask uh, a question what is a smart building uh, how we navigate in this uh digitalization process uh and what we consider a smart building is a building that uh has intelligence yes of course but there is a more proper definition uh that the industry is adopting uh in regard to the smart building uh, a smart building essentially is not just composed by intelligent systems that are uh, specialized to do automation, control, optimization within a building, but it is characterized to have major building system integrated on a common network. Uh, it, it's very important uh, to have 
that definition carved in a way where those systems can help individually to become more and more intelligent and specialized, but it is where the information and the functionality are cross-shared between different systems that really the uh, nature of a smart building can start to uh, deliver the, the promise. Uh, so in order to uh, deliver energy efficiency uh, um, reduction, um, operational effectiveness and occupant satisfaction. Uh, so ultimately the smart building seems to be the way to go to uh, really reduce energy and carbon footprint. Uh, it's been proven study in many uh, examples. Um, but uh, why we need the building to become digital? Grant showed a slide before uh, referring to this number that I think is becoming and resonating uh, in, in, in all of us, 40% of world energy consumption is uh, as attributable to the uh, building stock, the existing building stock. And by uh, CO2 emission, they account for almost 36% overall globally. But there is a new mandate, as you know, the Paris Agreement Goal 2050, with several a local regulation that are driving the industry to really become carbon neutral. Uh, and that is not uh, a challenge considering the building stock uh, that we have today. Um, the, the, there are, uh, we spend more than 90% of our life in building. Uh, and today, fortunately, enterprise corporation are embracing the ESG that stand for environmental, social, and governance goal. This is not a new concept, it's something that pioneering company were already uh, put in place 20, 30 years ago, but it become now a major trend, uh, meaning that the culture sensitivity of the world population is moving forward. Uh, these ESG uh, goal uh, are great, but they will uh, expose uh, an issue that the industry has today, that is in the workforce for building operator, building manager, uh, energy manager across the globe. Uh, they often have uh, more demanding expectation, new mandates and regulation. Uh, there is a need after pandemic to rethink the concept of a space, of a commercial building, of an office, uh, with new hybrid work strategy. So there is a need for flexibility. Definitively, the last couple of years, stress the industry at the point to think more forward uh, what is the value that there is no way to escape that we will need buildings and we need buildings to be green but also we want building to be attractive uh, bringing people and so how we can deliver technology solution digital solution that allow the workforce that is ultimately responsible to maintain operate uh, and, and really activate the building space for their scope uh, without uh, making too complex, uh, too difficult, without giving them uh, 10 systems to manage, but uh, really a single infrastructure. And that's really where the smart building come to place. Uh, with this preamble, I will jump into the uh, Powerhouse case study. Uh, Powerhouse is a new concept uh, it's an alliance of technology company that promoted this idea a building can not only be a net zero building over his lifetime he can generate more energy than what he produce uh, so i thought it was a great uh, example that it is possible actually to push the boundary and to really go to the net zero there are examples today that already have Trondheim is the fourth city in Norway. It is considered the uh, um, knowledge capital for Norway, thanks to the uh, very good uh, technology uh, Institute of Technology that is uh, is, in, is in Trondheim. Uh, the building is dedicated to office spaces. Uh, it is extended over an area of twelve thousand two hundred square meter, uh, and it produces energy essentially the facade and the design of the building is equipped with uh, alternative energy source 
solar in particular, but also leveraging the ocean and the sea for with 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 novel approach with heat pumps to really cooling and heating uh, the system using also the ocean. Uh, the building achieved a BRIM outstanding uh, award that is one of the most uh, challenging award for green building. So Powerhouse ultimately is the biggest new energy positive building in Norway. Uh, the building generates more energy than it consumes. Uh, uh, and um, this design has been really in, a, in alignment with the environment. It followed the environment, has been designed to optimize uh, the energy that it harvests uh, and minimize the energy that 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 consume, ultimately resulting into this iconic architecture that 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 we are uh, we are seeing on some picture in the in the in the, in the rest of the presentation. Ultimately, is a comfortable uh, work environment featuring an excellent space characterized by light, open spaces, air circulation. Uh, it's it's an outstanding project. This is uh, a project that has been done with a lot of collaboration on technology. Uh, as part of the scope we had uh, in this building was POE lighting as at the beginning. Uh, we partnered with Cisco System on the PSC side, Johnson Control on the integration for the BMS that has uh, a large scope, including the energy generation within the building. How does it work? So you see this uh, this um, design of the building, the 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 the, Gary the uh, surface of the uh, um, of the building is equipped with solar panel. More than three thousand square meter of solar panel are uh, harvesting energy, uh, and when the energy is more than what the building consume actually are large but the 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 building distribute energy to his neighbor meaning contingent building but also public transportation as an example here this bus stop 15 minutes uh, at the entrance of the building to recharge before continuing uh, in the community. Uh, Trondheim is not a very big city, it's 150,000 people. So that's how the building is sharing its energy <laughs> harvest to the community. And uh, next slide. What was our scope? What we did in this building? So we started in 2019, um, essentially, uh, actually, and 2018 with the scope for. POE lighting. The challenge the customer encountered was having a lighting system that was very dynamic, adaptive, uh, ability to implement that environmental concept, but also having a um, tunable fixture uh, to compensate the long winter uh, that in Norway you can see. So the, the, the quality of light and to balance between energy driven implementation and comfort uh, for the occupant. So we delivered the project and just after the POE lighting system has been commissioned and completed, uh, we did the integration with Metasys. Uh, Metasys is the Johnson Control BMS platform via BACnet. Uh, we keep the POE lighting infrastructure not only to really respond to the lighting automation uh, and specification the customer had, but also embedding uh, a granular sensory network, in particular temperature humidity with an ocean self-power device, no battery ever in that building. There is not a single battery running in every device. So it's all PoE low voltage for the scope the Molex cover and the lighting infrastructure hosted sensory network for uh, sharing information with uh, the BMS system that also does other function uh, beyond um, beyond uh, HVAC and, and and orchestrating some other uh, system with use cases that are tailored down to really address comfort and energy consumption. Uh, then we've been the customer has been hit with pandemic 2020. Everybody knows the world change and shift. 
uh, really big challenge, new need for flexibility. Uh, and that's where the nature of the system, this digital approach has been pay off dividend, uh, giving the customer a, another gear to switch in order to amplify and make the changes without investing into a new system or a deep, uh, deep configuration or recommissioning the system. Everything remained like that. We came with uh, what we call Coursing 2.x, that is the digital uh, building software platform that run uh, an overlay on the physical Ethernet backbone for PoE, uh, where we deliver to a customer a variety of functionality with a single pane of glass that allow the customer to change setting. Uh, so you don't need to be a, a, a programmer. You don't need to be a technician. Uh, with a very simple user interface, changing behavior, uh, uh, implementing aggressive policy for energy saving, uh, but also uh, reading through space utilization without adding any additional sensor to the previous original scope. Uh, and so the project has been completed with the 2.x upgrade and has been a great success. Um, so what was the original scope and then subsequently what we cover across this journey? Uh, the system we deployed is built on PoE infrastructure. Uh, we insist on this positioning because we believe that the only harmonized standard in the world today remain Ethernet. And when we talk about IT, OT convergence, IoT, we believe that the backbone for the digital infrastructure uh, is based on Ethernet. And why not taking advantage of the power ability that Ethernet PoE offer today? Up to 90 watt can be, can be transmitted on a single category cable. So we were able to light every light over low voltage PoE, every sensor. Uh, and so that is the really backbone for the physical infrastructure. We implemented human-centric lighting with dynamic scene, circadian cycle uh, that helped during the long day uh, and deliver a single pane of glass smart building dashboard um, with an integration with BMS. So for the lighting scope, uh, the choice was on PoE because at the time, comparison with DALI, comparison with DMX, uh, or other technology made the customer realizing uh, the complexity uh, and, and the ability with the digital nature of PoE and the, uh, to, to, to really address uh, dynamically uh, the artificial light with biodynamic light, circadian cycle, uh, but also hosting on the same infrastructure all the sensory network, even if they are not used by the lighting automation piece but can be shared with the BMS. <laughs> if we look at this anatomy of the physical layer, uh, allow me to spend a few words here. I don't want to bother really with technical diagram, but I think it's important to understand the layer where you have a PSC. What is a PSC? It's called power source equipment. This terminology in PoE is regulated by the IEEE 802.3 BT standard today, capable of 90 watt. Uh, so the Molex uh, develop all the devices that are connected to the PoE switch. We receive power and data over a category cable, and then we distribute power and communication with the end device. This end device, name it to be lights, name it to be sensors, wire and wireless. So we have the ability to bridge over an ocean uh, with this gateway on the right side of the screen is essentially using the same co-op protocol that is an IoT protocol to communicate with the application and then is bridging an ocean over IP essentially. So at the point we can connect wireless sensor, wall switch, uh, so the building and the, uh, the, the, the customer selected an ocean for wall switches, the entire building, no battery, easy to install, easy to configure and commission, uh, no maintenance. Uh, so that was one choice. Temperature, humidity sensor, I mentioned later, and a uh, and few other devices. 
overall the building has officially 10 floors actually that's how we result you see here we see 13 floor this is taking out of our dashboard where we created two virtual floor three virtual floor uh, in reality there is a garage uh, that is also in the scope of poe lighting and there are uh, a mezzanine and few other areas that we really digitalize as as a separate floor even if they are not really physical floor uh, there are more than thousand poe port the project was completed in 2019 with 60 watt poe technology uh, we use 958 uh, molex uh, poe node to get power and data to distribute to lights and sensors uh, and and devices the emergency lighting also been in the scope of the building uh, with the with with the central backup power uh, overall we are supporting almost to, to more than 2700 uh, light luminaire uh, 2500 wire sensor and uh, 20, 20, almost 300 uh, wireless and ocean sensor uh, we also have wireless uh, relay for plug load general loads control uh, based on occupancy uh, and that has been added later after the initial scope um, overall uh, this is a simple uh, a simple uh, extraction from the dashboard where you can see the inventory of all the device and our platform as a device manager that allow the customer to look what device are if there is any device that is not connected or not responding to self manage the building with more independence and auto sufficiency and that has been one of the big drive that is really resonating with the comment we were making before where the customer building operator are usually understaffed. <clears throat> so the building look really in some area with open ceiling to allow the air circulating. Majority of the light selected has been this linear, super efficient uh, LED base. Um, we been able to drive and control Two lights every single 60 watt port plus uh, a, a series of sensors uh, connected in this chain uh, before or after the lights on the same uh, poe circuit if you allow me to use that word and that is essentially the poe wire for the wireless we have the coursing uh, wireless gateway to an ocean wall switches uh, temperature humidity sensor and uh, high voltage relay has been deployed uh, as i mentioned before so ethernet was also a bit chosen because the, cust the the customer map really the impact also during the construction phase so the low voltage the low amount of copper or less amount of copper compared to traditional wiring uh, with line voltage also was a plus for poe uh, there is a case that is very interesting i want to bring ultra poe power saving in this life what does it mean so when the pandemic hit uh all the physical the network infrastructure and the poe gear even when the lights are off they still consume some power standby power but when you sum it up uh it was something so the customers start to notice during the period of pandemic that there was still a consumption from the system uh, due to the uh, standby power to allow communication between different sensors and different devices. They came with a challenge request. Can you turn off uh, or reduce the power consumption in standby? Uh, Molex together with Johnson Control and with the customer, we brainstorm and we come with an innovative scheme. It's unique in the market where we are using strategically placed sensor within the building and when there is no occupancy at all uh, with multi-sensor reading from different and then AI element that structure the logic behind it, uh, turn off POE port and network switch. So the Molex platform, the software has the ability to really shut the port, the element, uh, the power, the end device itself uh, and keeping only few port open to detect 
uh, an entrance and uh, another part of the building critical where there is presence, then the rest of the building activate and the power infrastructure come to place. Uh, this has been an um, outstanding achievement. I'm very proud of what we were able to achieve with the customer. Thank you, Graham. You can move on to the next slide. So I think I'm overcoming a little bit. Here. So the Coursing Digital Twin, why we talk about smart building, and I like to insert the word digital in that. You may hear me uh, referring to digital. Why? It's the reason why is the digital nature of the building is what the market is start to require now. Uh, really to answer the challenge I mentioned before, shortage in resource. There is an expectation that facility manager, building operator uh, that are kind of in the old age workforce will retire and there is no enough uh, talent joining the workforce for building management. Uh, the necessity and the ESG uh, driven uh, goals that need to be measured, need to be quantified and are putting new goals on the team require really a digital model. So what we delivered to the customer was a single pane of glass, we call it this way, dashboard, with power and energy monitoring, space utilization monitoring, indoor environmental monitoring. We don't exclude the customer would like to add new digital sensors for uh, uh, CO2, VOC, and other things that we have available today to augment the environmental monitoring. Uh, we have the ability, the customer has the ability through the US user interface to manage the application, lighting control, shading control, plug load control, manage through schedule, setting in a very simple and intuitive way, a device management console, notification and alarm, uh, and also the ability to log in into a building with user defined role. Uh, so the team that manage the building can really scope uh, their job uh, really in area that are needed. Ultimately, during its lifetime, Powerhouse will have supplied its surrounding with the surplus of green energy. I would like to close the presentation this way because it is a tangible example that not only it's possible, uh, it's done. And, and so, uh, the industry is ready today, in my opinion, and that's why I wanted to submit to the audience uh, the journey and the case study around Powerhouse. And to close the presentation, I have a quote, um, the next slide, uh, that is coming from Larry Fink, the BlackRock uh, CEO. Every company in every industry will be transformed by the transition to the net zero world. The question is, which role you are going to play? Will you lead or will you be led? This is inevitable. It is happening. It's better to be on the front of the innovation. That's, that's the conclusion of my presentation. I really appreciate your, the time and the attention the audience is giving to me. Great. Thank you very, very much indeed, Giovanni. That was very, very interesting. I'm, I'm surprised and amazed that a building that far north where it's 20 hours of darkness in winter can be powered by solar power just shows how good it is. And it, it, it is a good, a good point. I think that it probably is something I want to point out. He generates more energy than what he needs during the summer, it's spreading to the surrounding. During the winter, the building used from the grid infrastructure energy from outside source. But the balance yearly and in the lifetime of the building is positive. And that's what a positive building means. Uh, it's not generating positive energy all the time, but in the, in fact, the metric powerhouse use is defining the lifetime of the project to 60 years. In the lifetime of 60 years, they will become uh, uh, with a surplus of energy produced and generated and distributed to the labor uh, the community around. Great. Well, again, thank you very, very much indeed, Giovanni. That was very, very interesting. We will be uh, sending the slides and uh, recording to everybody who registered. Um, there are a few other questions. We've run a little bit over time. But I will answer the questions per, per email. 
So all thank you very, very much indeed. And um, those of you who are not yet members, please feel free to join us. And I hope to see many of you at our next quarterly um, webinar next month. Thank you very much indeed. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.